Hey, welcome again to another discussion starter uh, for our series, Deception and Destruction, Postmodernism and the Spirit of Antichrist. Today's message was, Don't Disunity. And so we want to talk about this dichotomy, this, this, this antithetical parallel, how you like that word, between what the Holy Spirit does and what the Antichrist Spirit does. And nowhere is this seen any greater than in today's subject matter. So we're going to dig right in today. We're going to go through seven scriptures, three on one side, three on the other, and then one combining scripture. These are the same scriptures that we talked about in our message. And by the way, sometimes in our messages, we go through a passage, and sometimes we draw from multiple passages to create what we would call a systematic theology regarding a subject. Today was one of those days where last week we were only basically in one passage. And so let me just walk us through these today. We're going to read them and then ask some questions. Our first passage today comes from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Well, lots of interesting words in there that were emphasized. We see the word as we come to the end, all, in all, in all, over all. And so we see this, we see this idea of the collective all, that means all, uh, that God the Father is over all, in all. We also saw in this passage an interesting, uh, an interesting word that occurred multiple, multiple times, and that is the word one. And so I'd like for you to pause, the, pause your video here and ask yourself in your group or in your own personal study this question. Paul makes it clear in this passage that one of the defining characteristics of the Holy Spirit and, and what he brings is what? What do you see the Holy Spirit bringing in this passage? Well, obviously, the idea here is unity. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is unity. And we see that God's design for his universe and for his people is that we would be one. That we would be one in him. You see, this is a reflection of the Trinity. Three persons, but one God. And we're to be multiple people, but we're to be united as mankind, humankind. Isn't it interesting that we see that Adam is the name of the first man, but Adam is also the reference of mankind. And so Eve is included in that. And so Adam is individual, but it's also unified. And we are all in Adam. And so we go on to our second verse today, and let's look there together. This is John chapter 17, verse 21 through 23. That they may be all one. Let me just pause right here. This is a prayer of Jesus, one of his last prayers recorded. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. As I mentioned, this is the last major prayer that Jesus prayed, and he spends this time as he's preparing to die and that he's going to go through hell on earth, and his prayer is, again, this idea of oneness, of unity. And that's what he asked the Father to bring to us. This especially means Christians, but as we saw earlier in Ephesians, that God is over all and in all. And so there is a unity, again, that God is asking us to have and Jesus is praying for us to have. And so... Pause the camera, I mean, pause the video here in a moment and ask yourself this question. Why do you think the last major prayer of Jesus is so focused on unity? 
the last major prayer of Jesus, why is it so focused on unity? Well, the answer to that question may be obvious, but maybe it becomes even more obvious as we look in the book of Romans and see what Paul says about this idea of unity. Look with me at Romans chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you would, Pause and ask yourselves again this question. How does this last passage answer the previous question? How does oneness and why is oneness so important? And you can see it again in the end of this passage in Romans. And so it's obvious here in these passages that we've seen, God's desire and design is that we are one reflecting the Trinity, reflecting the very nature of God, that we are individuals, just like each person of the Trinity are individuals, but we are one together. Now, we recognize that we live in a world that is very much divided. And in our day and in postmodern thought, it promotes division rather than unity. And so we see that God's Holy Spirit brings unity. And as we saw in that last passage, that when there is unity, God is glorified. Don't miss this. Unity brings glory to God. I'm amazed that we as Christians don't understand this. And so what's the opposite then of the Holy Spirit that brings unity? We're going to find that out in these next few verses. Let's pause together and read this next passage. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 5, talking about the last days when the spirit of Antichrist is taking full hold, listen to what it says. But mark this, there will be terrible times in those days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutals, not lover of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Wow. That is not a time or a place that I want to live in. And nonetheless, that is what we're seeing all the more. If you don't believe me, turn on the news. We're seeing more and more division, and that is why I see in this world the rising of the spirit of Antichrist that is contrary to the unity that the spirit of Christ brings to the world. And so we see this opposite happening. And so would you pause and ask yourselves this following question? How is the spirit of Antichrist manifested in these days opposite to the spirit of Christ? How is the spirit of Antichrist that we're seeing today manifested? How is it opposed and opposite to Christ? And maybe you can talk about how you're observing that. And so we see that the spirit of Antichrist is opposed as it brings disunity. And everything that we saw in that previous passage, all these characteristics are selfish. And all these characteristics ruin relationships. They're not good things to have in your marriage or in your, in your workplace. And so we go on and we see the next scripture. And if you would, let's read this one together. Matthew 24, verse 10 through 12. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. What we see here, this is incredible, that the more the Holy Spirit is ignored and the more the spirit of Antichrist is found in the world. And again, we know that God's sovereign. We see, as we talked about last week, that he is turning them over, that he is giving them over. That is, God is removing his restraining power, which he has plenty of, by the way. He's removing that 
and allowing the Antichrist to do what he wants, the spirit of Antichrist, the more we see that, the more we see division and disunity. And so let's just have a discussion for a moment and ask ourselves the following questions. How bad do you see disunity growing in these days? And how bad do you see it possibly getting according to this passage? Second part of that question is this. Do you see disunity growing in our world today? And have you observed that? Are you able to observe that? Take a moment and talk about that. Now, an interesting passage comes from a book that we're not in much because it's very short. There's only one chapter. It was a book written by Jude, who most people believe was a brother of Christ. Fascinating. And so Jude writes a lot about the last days and, and it's some very interesting literature. Let's read out of Jude. Jude chapter 1, verse 18 through 19. In the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions. Get this. These who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit. Wow. This is the passage that really shows the contrary of that Ephesians passage that we talked about first. Where God's Holy Spirit brings unity, we see those who are devoid of the Holy Spirit bring division. Jude makes that very clear. And so in a philosophy that builds tribes, that causes divisions, that takes, instead of saying, out of, out of the many come one, instead they say, out of the one comes many. And instead of finding unity with people from all over the world, no matter what their culture, and seeing the value in that they are imago dei, created in the image of God, we begin to see our differences. And by the way, we've talked about this, but our technology has allowed us to embrace these, uh, not differences, but to embrace those that are only like us, that only think about us. So instead of opening us to a world of possibilities, the internet allows us to find people who think only the way we think and to associate with them. So we no longer have to deal with our neighbors. We can go into our basement and find people who think exactly the way we do and exclude everybody else. That's not healthy. And so God designed us in this multicultural context. Now, we talked this morning about the difference between multicultural and intercultural. Let's just let me pause for a moment and reemphasize this from this morning. The difference between multicultural and intercultural is huge. Multicultural recognizes that there are multicultures. Intercultural recognizes that there are multiculturals, multicultures that can relate to one another. We are to be the latter. God created us all different, and yet we are to be united in the Holy Spirit. And so let's ask ourselves the following question. In this passage, we can see the opposite of the unity of God's Holy Spirit is the disunity of those devoid by the Spirit. What can we, who are filled with the Spirit, do to promote unity? Second part of that question. What are some things that we as Christians do that destroy unity? And finally, should we have unity at any cost? Talk about that for a moment. I told you earlier there would be three passages that talk about the spirit of unity, three that talk about the spirit of disunity, which is the Antichrist spirit. But we see how all things are brought back together in the end. In the end, when everything is made right, we need to see what that's supposed to look like. And we're supposed to emulate that now. We're supposed to aim towards that now. In the end, will it be every person for themselves or will it be every person united? Let's look at the end of the book and see. Revelation. Chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. We see here that when God brings everything to a final conclusion, Every person who has every distinctive will still be there. 
the cultures of the world will still be reflected. The different color skin and the different characteristics of how we are designed will be there. And yet, in all that division, will be brought together in unity. That's God's picture for the world. That we are many, but we're one. Not that we're one and dispersed into many. And so let us embrace our diversity, but let us also promote our unity. Thank you for joining today. Hope you've enjoyed your study time together. God bless.